Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about endoplasmic reticulum. And this endoplasmic reticulum, you can find this endoplasmic reticulum in eukaryotic cells. And this endoplasmic reticulum is shortly abbreviated as ER. And it is enclosed sacs or tube-like structure. And it all and next. This endoplasmic reticulum is absent in red blood cells and also in the spermatozoa. And based upon the presence and absence of the ribosomes, this endoplasmic reticulum will be classified into two types. They are rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And remember, this rough endoplasmic reticulum is shortly abbreviated as RER and smooth endoplasmic reticulum is shortly abbreviated as SER. The major and only one difference of this rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum is that in RER, the ribosomes are present. But if you see in the case of SER, ribosomes are absent. And not only the ribosomes, hepatocytes are also present in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So coming to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, lipid synthesis occurs in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And the ribosomes are absent. And detoxification process also takes place in this smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And the major only thing which you have to remember here in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is steroid hormones are also be regulated uh, by the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and normally if you see in the case of animal cells steroid hormones are, are regulated majorly by the smooth endoplasmic reticulum itself and here the only major difference which you have to remember is that presence of ribosomes and absence of the ribosomes in rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum okay and uh, the major thing which you have to remember is cisterne so what is meant by cisterne i am going to explain you it later because if you should know the pathway of the transport of proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum to the uh, Golgi apparatus, then only you can understand the cisterne. So, I am going to explain you the cisterne later. So, enough. This endoplasmic reticulum mainly helps in the transport of proteins from vesicles of endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi apparatus. Just now I have said you, right? So, what is the main function of this endoplasmic reticulum is that it mainly helps in the transport of proteins from the vesicles of endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi apparatus. That's nothing but vesicles are present in the endoplasmic reticulum itself. So that vesicles consist of proteins and the proteins which are present in the vesicles of endoplasmic reticulum will get transported to the Golgi apparatus. That's only the major function of this endoplasmic reticulum. So this what I have said you here cisterna. This cisterna are present in the Golgi apparatus. So what is the main function of this cisterna is that the cisterna consists of enzymes and these enzymes plays a major role in the prevention of the redundant enzymatic activity and it also helps in the modification of proteins and polysaccharides and it also helps in the packaging of proteins. So once these proteins will get transported into the Golgi apparatus, then this mod uh, this modification of the proteins takes place, and that modification of proteins takes place in the cisterne. Okay, this cisterne is nothing but it is present in the Golgi apparatus. So that's only the thing which you have to remember. So the only thing which you have to remember is that the proteins will get transported from the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi apparatus, and this Golgi apparatus consists of cisterne, right? And this cisterne, what happens? The packaging of the proteins, I mean the modification and the packaging of the proteins takes place in the cisterne of the Golgi apparatus. Okay, so I have said you that the proteins will get transported from the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi apparatus, right? So what type of proteins will get transported? There will be two type of proteins called as properly folded proteins and unproperly folded proteins. So coming to the properly folded proteins, PDI, ERP29, HSP70, GRP78, calnexin and calreticulin are the type of properly folded proteins which will be get transported from the vesicles of endoplasmic reticulum to Golgi apparatus. So these are called properly folded proteins. So coming to the unproperly folded proteins. So when these properly folded proteins will get transported, then, uh, then the function will be normal in the human. Uh, not only the human, but also in the animals also. But if you see in the case of unproperly folded proteins, when these unproperly folded proteins will get transported from the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi apparatus, then what happens is that unfolded protein response occurs, which is also called a stress response or ER stress. ER stress is nothing but endoplasmic reticulum stress. So when this ER stress occurs, then what happens is a disturbance of a redox regulation and calcium regulation occurs. So calcium will not get supplied to the bones properly. So uh, the, the, you know that the bones require calcium in a major way, right? So when this calcium will not get supplied properly to the bones, then what happens is that the major function of the bones will cannot be played. I mean, uh, there will be in pains in the bones. Okay. So uh, to cut uh, to reduce the pain of the bones then the calcium should work properly then the calcium regulation should work properly so if you transport so if the transport of improperly folded proteins occurs then what happens calcium regulation doesn't take place you know disturbance occurs but if you see the case of properly folded proteins calcium uh, calcium uh, response occurs properly so the bones will also work properly and the health of the human will also be good but if you see the case of improperly folded proteins when the unfolded protein proteins will get transported into the golgi apparatus from the endoplasmic reticulum then what happens then the calcium response will not be proper i mean the calcium uh, will not get 
uh, will not get reached up to the bones properly in such a way that uh, the bones will get disturbed and the pains occurs in the bones so next uh, the endoplasmic reticulum was firstly coined by garnier the reticulum was firstly discovered through a light microscope by a scientist called Garnier in 1897 and he coined the term as ergastoplasm and later many other scientists discovered the transport of proteins in an ionic form in such a way that later they termed the coin as ergastoplasm as endoplasmic reticulum. So the only one thing which you have to remember in this endoplasmic reticulum is that uh, there will be a two type of endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum and is rough endoplasmic reticulum consists of ribosomes and hepatocytes. Okay, whereas if you see in the case of smooth endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes are not present. Then what happens in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum? Lipids will be produced. I mean, I mean the steroid hormones will be produced if you see in the case of animal cells. Okay, so this is the only thing which you have to remember. And let us see about this endoplasmic reticulum in a diagrammatic form. So this is called endoplasmic reticulum diagram and if you see here in the theory part what I have explained to you there are two types of reticulum endoplasmic reticulum right there are rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So what is the major difference of this rough endoplasmic and smooth endoplasmic is nothing but there is a presence of ribosomes in rough endoplasmic reticulum. Whereas if you see in the case of smooth endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes are absent, right? So these are ribosomes, these daughter-like structures which I have drawn here, here, there are many daughter-like structures, right? And those daughter-like structures are called as ribosomes. And these ribosomes are present in the rough endoplasmic reticulum only. But if you see in the case of smooth endoplasmic reticulum, these ribosomes are absent. I mean those daughter-like structures are absent, right? And one of the important things which you have to remember is that this rough ER as well as the smooth ER will be originated from the site of a nucleus itself. This is the site of the nucleus. That is nothing but from the outer membrane of the nucleus. Only this rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum will be originated. Okay. So this is about the diagram of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So, so this is the image of endoplasmic reticulum which is mainly formed under the presence of a microscope. So if you see here in the diagram of the endoplasmic reticulum, they mention here rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, right? So here if you see, if you also see here, there is a presence of ribosomes here. I mean those daughter-like structures, these dark daughter-like structures which we have mentioned here are called as ribosomes. Whereas if you see in the case of smooth endoplasmic reticulum, uh, the ribosomes are absent. I mean those daughter-like structures are not visible in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum region, right? So the rough endoplasmic reticulum consists of ribosomes and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum doesn't consist of any ribosomes. So the production of proteins also occurs in the rough endoplasmic reticulum only because of the presence of ribosomes. But if you see in the case of SER, I mean smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the ribosomes are absent. So the production of proteins also doesn't occur where the production of lipids occur. Okay. So this is only the proof which was given by the scientist uh, with the help of a microscope. So thank you for watching with this video guys. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe. And if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment in the comment box. Thank you.